<laughs> Viva La Vegan! Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with two great vegan painters. They're both from Washington DC in the United States of America. I have Dana Ellen and I have Matt, Matt Ciso. Dana you can get on her website danaellen.com I'll spell that for you D-A-N-A-E-L-L-Y-N.com and Matt you can get on his website mattsesow.com they're both on Facebook and Instagram and they've both been um, full-time painters since about um, 2000, 2002 and they have studios in and around the Washington DC area. How are you both? We're great, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's it's, good. Uh, magic, magic that we're talking to. <laughs> magic <laughs> through the wires. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get on a plane in about I think seven or eight hours, and in in twenty four hours sitting on a plane, we'll be in Australia. Yes, so. cool. Very exciting. Sure well, <laughs> I hope you're all ready for the weather. Oh, you'll be in Melbourne first, won't you? Yes. Yes. So it's a bit. Um, it can be colder in Melbourne. They call it four seasons in one day. Because sometimes the weather can change so quickly. It'll be raining one second, it'll be freezing one second, and the sun will be really hot. But when you get to the Gold Coast, that'll be much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've, we've checked the forecast and, and packed accordingly, but most of the packing is art supplies. So, yes. Yeah. And sweater so, and some paint. <laughs> yeah. So, when you're talking about coming to Australia, tell us about that. Why are you coming here? And what for? Uh, we are coming. Um, for, we have concurrent solo exhibits at a gallery called 19 Karen Art Space in Mermaid Beach. Uh, my show is called All American Girl and Matt's is All American Boy. So we're traveling there to attend our opening. We've already shipped the paintings. They're all in the hand of the gallery already. And then yeah, they cleared customs. They cleared <laughs> customs. Yeah. yeah, big finger cross uh. there, yeah. <laughs> so, <whoop. laughs> yeah. There should be 12 paintings each. Um, in the exhibit, and then while we're there, I'll let Matt follow up. I'm like, then while we're there for two weeks, we'll be doing uh, uh, painting. Yeah, so we're, we uh, fly to. Uh, I'm going to pronounce it incorrectly, but we Melbourne. say Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> That's Americans call it. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, land there in about I guess about two twenty days. two days from now. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're just we we have an apartment rented, and we're just going to uh, set up a little studio there and paint for a week. And kind of discover and and you know walk about as they say uh, the the city, um, art stores, vegan restaurants, and um, and just kind of get inspired and paint whatever we see, whatever we feel. Um, for that week, we're there um, with the paint supplies we bring, and also the paint supplies that we find in in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to do the same thing. We fly to Gold Coast. Um, after that first week, before our solo, and we'll paint for like four or five days there as well. When we're all done painting and we return home in America, we'll we'll have a show here in Washington D.C. called Made in Australia. That's so we're gonna, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you staying in Melbourne? What area? Do you remember? We're right in the downtown. I guess it's called the the CBD, right? Okay. The, um, so we're on Exhibition Street, just like I think a block off of Finders Lane, like right near the all the was it called Laneways, correct? Flinders Lane, yeah. maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. that's a really good area. I was trying to pick right in the heart of it so that when, you know, we're so focused on painting when we're there, but when we get the little itch, like, go out, of course, we'll have drinks in our apartment, but, um, you know, if we just want to take a quick painting break and hop out to one of the one of the bars right there, it's nice to just be in the heart of it and be able to hop in and out and get what we need. Definitely. And um, there's a lot of vegan places in Melbourne. It's um, very, it's like our Mecca, really, so you'll find Ooh. enough food there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tend to be anytime we travel we tend to be grocery store travelers yeah. to begin with I have my list I'm kind of excited to be able to eat out you have more restaurants there than we have here in DC I think for but actually not even I think I know you have far more vegan restaurants in Melbourne than we have here oh wow so why why does DC not have that many places um I just opened last week and they're opening another location for the same restaurant in, in a couple of weeks um it's it's a growing uh, but there's just only a couple of places that are dedicated vegan um, and it's sort of an aside like we've both been vegetarian for a very long time and going vegan is about one year in right now mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we now see uh, that being vegetarian was super easy <laughs> like now we look back and like oh it's so easy to be a veg you can go anywhere um, uh, there's not as many choices for vegans so tell but me I about sorry 
but I love cooking, so I'm out, I I don't really need to be going out. Yeah, and I love yeah. eating. So. And he loves eating my food. It's a good benefit for me. Yeah. That's a good match then. Yeah. Oh, perfect. It works. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a bit about why both of you went vegan. Um, well, for me, as a start, it was since I was a kid, I always had a problem eating. I was always picking at my food, and like everything had to be charboiled and boneless, and like. But I didn't fully make the connection. I don't think many kids make it that early. Like, I didn't know why I had such a problem. I just knew, like, it was gross to me to be eating mm. these things because I could see the animal in it all the time. Mm. I guess I didn't understand it. Um, and then making the jump to vegan was something I tried once or twice, and it didn't take hold until last year. I think the, the straw that broke the camel's back, as the saying goes, like, reading uh, the book Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. Yep. Like, that was yep. the final crux. Like... Every time I researched it and learned a little bit more, it brought me a little closer, and then everything all just fell into place, and I was like, "That I know this time yeah. I'm really vegan, like, yeah. for all the fits and starts from I think, before. I think yeah. it's about education. I mean, yeah. for me, I, you know. I've been vegetarian, I guess, since 98, yeah. and mm -hmm. thought I was, you know, doing, doing a lot, <laughs> but then as I learned more and read more and heard more, I was like, well, being a vegan is actually more logical for yeah. the way I feel about animals and things, so I... You know, it, and it's been actually such a positive change that um, I, I wish I would have done it much earlier. Yeah, I, had, I, had I done the research and thinking about it more, it would have just happened earlier. Um, I worked with an organization here in D.C. called Compassion Over Killing. Yeah, and I'm learning, yeah, learning about the egg industry was kind of the first step in the final step. Mm. Yeah, yeah, all the things right. that you do, yeah. And um, yeah, where you're both of the places you're staying actually, Melbourne and the Gold Coast, they're both very vegan friendly. So you will not starve when you're in Australia. <laughs> and um, I just wanted to talk about um, your travels that you do or your exhibitions abroad. And Donna, just correct me if I'm wrong, but does Matt go along with you? You've been to Spain and Morocco and um, various other places overseas. Is that joint things together that you do? Yeah, every, all the, the list of places I sent you was all trips that we've taken together. So we've been together for 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first, yeah, the first trip we took together was to Argentina. We went to Buenos Aires. Um, and that just, like, let's go somewhere. Um, so the, mm. the choice was somewhat happenstance. And then since then, yeah, we've been to Argentina, to China, to Spain, to France, Switzerland. Wow. Morocco, all the, yeah, my list was all including the two of us, and this is something that we've always done together, and something I've never done before meeting him, but he'd done it before he met me. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is it something you do, like, every two years we're going to go somewhere, or um, just, do you get grants for it? What's the process? Well, what's happening now with, um, I guess with social media, um, we get offers to, to show overseas, like, that's kind of what happened in 19 Karen. Mm -hmm. Um they see our artwork and they see that we travel and we're willing to travel. And I think that just tells a gallery right away that we're willing to, you know, make, make the effort to go visit them and paint there and, and do the thing. So I, I think it's kind of snowballed into now it's like, we already have two overseas uh, trips planned for next year already. One in France and one in Barcelona. So cool. uh, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's great. And I, I think it just really boils down to our willingness to, to travel and the galleries usually pay for a part of it, like whether it's lodging or part of the flight. Um, it re you know, it really depends on, on the situation. So, but usually the galleries are very, um, it, you know, willing to pay. Yeah. But, yeah. And what yeah. you were saying, what you're going to do when you're here in Australia, similar that you've done previously, I assume, where you create the stuff in the various countries and you bring it back to your hometown and you show everyone what you've done. Yeah. The, the most concrete example that, that apples to apples of this trip is when we went to China for three weeks and we were on, we were actually on a tour with Matt's parents, which was really great. Cool. Uh, it was a three week trip and we saw certain, more than you can imagine in three weeks and it was very, uh, very densely booked and so we still had to find the time to paint because we had a show mm. one week after returning called Made in China. Um, so we knew we had to produce enough work for the show. Yeah. And so that's what we've done with this trip. Um, thankfully, it's in our own hands to schedule our time, um, unlike the China trip. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to produce enough work, and two days after we return home, full-on jet lag, we'll be hanging the show and attending an opening, like, three <laughs> days later. Wow. Yeah. 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 And, we, and we haven't created any of the paintings yet. So right, this yes. will all be within the next 
two weeks, so whatever inspiration yeah. you get, uh, it's so going to be interesting. Yeah, we thrive on, I, I hate to call it pressure because that sounds like, uh, sounds negative or something that other people might not find enjoyable, but like, I love knowing I have something to come back for. It's like purpose, not pressure, I guess. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people um, create that way, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And so you, what, you've got a week in Melbourne to create some um, art and then a week in the Gold Coast? Not even quite a week. We, we arrive in Melbourne on Thursday morning at like 6 a.m. And we're there until the following Wednesday. So we'll travel Wednesday, hopefully get to Gold Coast pretty much by, at least by noon. Mm -hmm. um, and we have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday night we have a live painting event at the gallery, like a preview opening. And we'll be painting, creating what we can. And I think we're going to leave what we paint there yeah. with the gallery. Yeah. So. That, those are paintings that we're just gonna leave in Australia. So okay. and then Saturday, yep, <laughs> yeah. and then Saturday's the opening, and Sunday we we make the journey home. So yeah. I'm just wondering about the process. Like you seem to not have that much time to to see. Say, um, you were saying in one of your emails to me, Dana, about the um, indigenous sort of um, animals that we have here in Australia. Will you even get to see them? What? How will you? How will this happen? <laughs> Yeah, well, one thing we do is, um, well, we bring our running clothes with us, so we, we like to run. Cool. So what, what we plan to do most mornings is we'll wake up, um, you know, after a previous night of painting, we'll run to a destination. Um, that destination might, I don't think we'll actually, you know, go to a zoo or anything, which I think that's probably the only way we're going to see, so, like a it's koala like, yeah. or a kangaroo. <laughs> in the city but, anyway, uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. But but we'll definitely take in, you know, like like people are going to be going to work around us. People are going to be like on the subway, on the buses, whatever. And we're going to take in like the the environment of the people yeah. of the city, and we'll see like an advertisement. We'll go to the grocery store and see mm -hmm. something. I mean, we'll we'll go to the library. Yeah. We'll Ned Kelly is that? Yeah, Ned Kelly. Yeah, Ned Kelly. <laughs> like I've already heard like I've already heard these things like Far Lap. I want to get into like there's all yeah. you know, there's Australian heroes and and yeah. You know, like I've done a little bit of research, not too much, but it, it's going to be a lot of that, just like free form and even your television, your your radio, mm -hmm. and we're just going to take it all in. And we, because when we sit and paint, like we'll paint for like ten or eleven hours, and maybe get like four hours of sleep, wake yeah. up, do it again, and we're just going to do that for two weeks. Um, my goal personally is to have around a hundred paintings, like small, medium paintings. Wow, that's so a it's, great it's, goal. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a sprint, and I've, and I've done it before. Cool. Um, so this, and this I have whole, to remind least, myself yeah. when I only do forty that that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I only did forty in like seven days. So, I just, well. yeah. so, so this is the pressure we put on ourselves, and yeah. then and then like in our show here in Washington D.C., we'll probably hang twenty of our best paintings yeah. each from what we do in Australia, and that means we'll have sixty to eighty paintings left where we can sell on our on our website mm -hmm. or to use for other shows, yeah. and and it, it's. Yeah, you know, so, it, we're gonna we're gonna bring bring the experience forward, you know, to, to other shows. And, yeah. You know, so from the from the animal perspective, so we probably won't see physically get to see many at all. But um, for me, it is like Matt mentioned, going to the market, going to the grocery store. So for me, it's the food culture. Mm. Um, you know, the animals are a total bonus, just out of love of wishing and wanting to see them. But for me, like my commentary, my art tends to be more about. The, you know the food culture and the how people view animals and so that's just the living and breathing and being in the city and feeling and seeing what's in the market and China again going back to the example of this being a similar trip yeah going to the, the supermarket in China and seeing a case full of live frogs like we don't see that in our supermarket <laughs> and yeah. going to France and seeing just rabbit after rabbit just skinned and whole and we just you know in America everything's already all packaged in yeah. saran wrapped and, and so actually, that's my big experience part of traveling and i know this is going to sound really corny but so the american question is so vegemite that's we yeah. don't really have that here and it, well, the research i've done is it vegetarian it, is it well um there's i think it's d3 or there's something in it that um half of the year it is vegan half of the year it's not um because of the processing plant but generally yes it is vegan and have you heard of marmite before Yes. Yes. It's similar to Marmite, but it's very distinct. So if you have it here on your toast, I had some this morning, actually. <laughs> um, and we have a brand of like a sort of margarine called Nutilex. So I had Nutilex and then just a tiny bit of Vegemite. So just like a really tiny bit. 
Okay. Not like you would with your peanut butter and jam stuff. Like, okay. think a quarter of that amount. <laughs> oh, we'd love to try that. Yeah. 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 To do that. Yeah, so, we, so can can you yeah. email us the name of the with the, the margarine? margarine? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. your favorite? So yeah. yeah. Nuts. Yeah, you'll be able to find that in um if you go to like Coles and Woolworths, the big sort of um supermarkets that we have here, um you'll be able to find them in the cold area. Right. Yeah. I'll send <laughs> that to you. <laughs> and that's the fun, yeah. <laughs> so um tell me you we mentioned you just mentioned it quickly before Dana about um you're doing a live um painting event and on the 14th here down at the Gold Coast and you're having a string quartet that's lovely um yes. tell me the process um well I believe uh there, it's a ticketed event so it's meant to be a preview for people and a ticketed event since there's a live string quartet playing and then we'll be painting live um I'm not sure from the gallery's perspective if they're going to be like if people just go wow I love what you just painted and I suppose they'll be able to buy it right then and there um I <laughs> I, I, let's I, just I, say, I, let's, if you would like the paintings, yeah, just, they're yours. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or if they don't sell that night, I suppose we can include them in the show the next night. I'm sure they'll be hanging on the walls. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was something that just was offered to us probably about a week ago. Um, yeah. So it's, it's a pretty new, we thought it was just the opening, and this is a new edition, which is nice to have another um, yeah. showcase for the work. Yeah. Yeah. I think the exciting part, in a sense, is that this will be the end of our, yeah. our painting, for the for the trip, so my plan is to bring all my all my best left paint yeah. that's left over. So I'll be putting a lot of thick, thick yeah. paint on on whatever I paint that night, which will probably be a bunny or a fish <laughs> or a bird. It's you know like a Mine I'll do something bad. pretty pretty typical of what I do. That's, I'm, that's easy. I'm thinking kangaroos, bunnies, and wombats at this point. At the end of the trip, it'll be uh, wombats. <laughs> and koalas. Yeah. Yeah. And koalas. Koalas, yeah. yes. That, well, in preparation for our Made in Australia show that we're having in BC when we come home, the gallery needed a couple of pieces to start promoting it with since we're not there yet. So I did a, uh, it's an American film that I'm assuming is pretty uh, pretty well known worldwide, Wizard of Oz. Yes. And uh, yes. yeah, so I, I recreated uh, in the Wizard of Oz, it's lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Yep. So I put Dorothy, the Wizard of Oz character, and it says wombats and kangaroos and koalas, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really fun. I've never painted uh, any of those three animals. And so it was, you know, I'm so familiar with the proportions of animals here. I was like, that, mm. that can't be right <laughs> as yeah. I painted them. So was, I'm very excited to paint uh, some, new, some new creatures when we're and there. Echidnas, have you heard of those? Which one? Echidna. Oh. Huh. They're like spiked, they've got a long sort of nose and they have all spikes all over them. Lots and wow. lots of fun animals over here. <laughs> like, is that like a porcupine? It sounds like a, yeah. Like yeah. a what? A porcupine? Yeah, yeah, very similar. But oh. it has a longer nose or snout. Yeah. So, yeah, like, so as I've done for pretty much all of our past trips, I'm much more analytical about pretty much most things than Matt is. Um, mm. <laughs> Yeah, he's, I just get in, more get messy. Of the moment, and I'm more like, let's think about this for 14 hours. Um, so you know, a number of books about Australia and getting to know, um, you know, some historical things and some about the animals. And basically, the consensus was from this one book I read was basically there's 110 ways to die at every turn from the animals and flora and fauna. <laughs> Still very excited though. <laughs> they can be. <laughs> They can be. It depends what you do. If you go out into the outback and you want to start boxing with a kangaroo, he'll probably win. <laughs> but I think if you're going to be in urban sort of areas, in like urban in Melbourne and um, down the Gold Coast near the beach, I think you'll be okay. <laughs> sure don't get hit by a bus. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Or in danger of buses and yeah. trams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trams in Melbourne, that's one of their sort of key things. So I'm sure that would probably be a bit of an inspiration to see, I'd say. And so you're talking about paints. What other material do you use to create pieces? Um, so I'm bringing, I'm bringing a lot of paper. Um, I use a lot of dry pastels and... Um, I guess Conte, is that a, a pretty well-known, like really rich color type dry pastel-esque stuff. I use lumber crayons, which you can get at a hardware store to, you know, like mark on wood. Um, yeah, just some, I mean, I use a lot of different materials, um, not just paint. And then the, the thing that I'm really looking forward to is just discovering new colors while we're there. And either it could be in an art store, it could be at a grocery store, it could be like at a little you know, 
uh, convenience store. Um, it, it, I'm just going to be looking for ways to paint with, with different materials. I mean, I've, I've painted with beets before because, you know, that red is really, really awesome. And beets so, you know, maybe I'll find something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, yeah, my material, I mean, I tend to, I tend to use acrylic the majority when I'm painting here at home. Um, and then, yeah, when traveling, it's the, the going to the art store, and that's our, our travel preparation has been, like, where's the grocery store, where's the vegan restaurant, where's the art store, yeah. and the used bookstore to, you know, get some reference. Um, yeah. So even on the airplane, you know, I'm bringing the dry goods on the airplane, hopefully do some sketches, and maybe if, if we can, when we have our layover in Dubai, you know, post things right then and there, like the, the inspiration from the first 14 hours of the trip. Um, yeah, and then just finding things when we, when we get there and, and seeing the new colors. In fact, someone recently said that they were decorating some room, like, in a, colors of Australia. I'm like, I, I can't wait to see, like, I don't know what that means yet. Like, I can't wait to what I take in that I feel is, you know, the colors of Australia. I'm not sure what that means either, to be honest. <laughs> 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 it could be like um, gold and green because that's sort of the Australian colours, but maybe it could be because we've got beautiful like reds and dirt sort of colours, especially out in the outback. So it could be that sort of the red versus like some of the greens or the dry areas. So yeah. and the blues, we've got beautiful colours. Mm. So and, and that's what's so fascinating. We were talking today in our walk. Yeah is when we look back at our paintings from other trips, how they do, like, you can tell which ones and remember which ones are from which trip, and they're so individual. Like, you're like, those are the Morocco paintings. Yeah. And I don't know what they'll look like yet, but there's gonna, yeah. there's gonna be Australia paintings that are so Australian. So, so our trick is to buy yeah. the paint while we're there. Yeah. And, like, and, and one of my big supplies is always the, uh, the hardware store. So we, mm -hmm. we have like, some hardware stores in the city that I'm that I'm already excited to visit, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> look, at, look at the colors and the, the paint supply. I mean, yeah. that's... Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be good. And, um, Dana, we did a, a little bit of an interview previously, over a year ago, I think, um, on Viva La Vegan. And um, you can have a look at that. Dana Ellen, vegan painter, her art and inspiration. And you were talking about um, different um, pieces that you had done. And they have quite an animal... Um, animal rights or vegan sort of impact, don't they? Where do you get inspiration for that? Is it, like you said, just the supermarkets and things like that? Um, when I'm traveling, yeah, it's definitely supermarkets and um, farmers markets and just seeing what the average, you know, what the average person when they're walking around wherever I am, what they see and what's normal to them. You know, here in, in D.C. or in America in general, like, what's normal is very prepackaged, mm. very removed from the animal, and pretty much anywhere else we've been, that isn't the case. So that's um, a big inspiration is definitely supermarkets and markets for me. And then beyond that, when I'm home, a lot of the animal rights stuff comes from just being active in, in the vegan community um, and just the books and research I do. A lot of my art just comes from the books and the things I uh, expose myself to just to, to find the inspiration. And when we met at the, um, the anti-fur conference in Washington, D.C., um, lots of people loved all your cute little paintings. Yeah. Do you find that people prefer something more in your face or they prefer the cute stuff? Perfect question, yeah. Um, yes and yes. <laughs> so people prefer, in a sense, to see the... the uh, hit you over the head paintings in the sense that they find them fascinating, they want to discuss them, they're really involved in them and they feel the same way, um, but they can't handle, even if they fully agree, uh, they can't handle looking at them every day on their wall. So then on the flip side of that, they also prefer on another level the cute animals because they're cute animals. Um, and so what's been funny is some of my cute animals, especially the, the pigs, are such like a bacon culture, which Mm. is part of what inspires me and infuriates me. I guess those are the same thing for me. Um, so a lot of my little cute pigs have sold to bacon eaters, and I, uh, mm. it's a because yeah. I'm like, do I just say, no, you can't buy that. Uh, they're buying it because like, oh, I love bacon. Mm. Um, <laughs> but on, on the plus side, I've heard back from many of them, enough of them to be very satisfied. They bought it, and then they tell me, you know what, I have to admit, it stares at me, and I can't eat bacon anymore. Good. It's just planting yeah. seeds. Yeah, I they, think. They, they, they buy it, haha, funny, and then they realize they actually can't face it. <laughs> so, 
making headlines. <laughs> so to a question for both of you, how do you think or do you think that art can be a really good activist tool? Uh, I mean, for me, one of my big art heroes is Suko. And I think Suko, when I, even before I knew I wanted to paint, I used to, you know, get these art magazines called Raw out of New York City back in the 80s and early 90s, I guess. And, and reading or looking at Suko's images growing up, and it, it really helped form me as a vegetarian. And, you know, what she sort would of do like her, does Suko do? Uh, or style? I can't well, say. <laughs> We have one of her one of her prints here, here mm -hmm. but she does a lot of like um, basically uh, what is it Tur turnabout is fair play or turn uh, it's kind of the idea of where like rather than the the humans eating the pigs the pigs are eating the humans yeah so she actually grew up near, yeah. she grew up near slaughterhouses oh, and so yeah. it's very on the aggressive side yeah she's from the UK and um, cool. yes but her work's really strong really politically charged yeah. um, just and she's done a lot of political stuff like with Malcolm X and and that really uh, kind of like black rights and things like that, which is really interesting to me as well. So I, um, I think that, you know, like, like, like kind of how Dana says that her paintings have influenced people to think more about what they eat. For me, even before I even thought about it, it yeah. was the same, same, uh, effect on me and, you know, wasn't even really thinking about it. And now I, I, I don't know. I, anyways, I, I think art is probably the, the easiest and quickest way to, to affect a lot of people. Yeah. Um, you know, without... Because it can uh, be subtle, can't it? Hmm? It can be subtle. Uh, yes, yes. Or it can be, like, you're not exactly saying, hey, you need to think about this, or you need to think about that, or you need to change your ways. It can be very subtle, like you are saying with the pig. People are like, oh, that's really funny, I eat them all the time. And then they're like, oh, I eat them all the time. <laughs> it's now personal. Yeah. Like, your breakfast. Yeah, and I actually I was in the the Peace Corps in the the Solomon Islands, which is kind of close to you. Are you still there <laughs> yeah. on um, on Bougainville Island? Nice. Yeah, I uh, for the was first in, ten years uh, of my life. Mm. Wow. Wow. What were your parents doing? So my dad's a boiler maker, so he was over there for the Bougainville Copper Bougainville Copper Limited. Oh. oh wow. yeah, yeah, I was Santa, Santa Ana. Was it um, Kira Kira? Island, I guess, is that the, or the city, um, but anyways, when I heard, a, I, I was there, and I heard a pig screaming mm. that they were getting ready for a wedding, mm. and my goodness, yeah, once you hear that, you're, that, you know, <laughs> anyways. It's pretty intense. But, yeah, so this is the first time I've been back to your area since uh, 1998, was when I was in the, the Solomons, Solomons. Cool. Yeah, so, we, we uh, left in 1990, there was like a war happening, so we left to, for Australia then. Yeah, no, that was before. Yeah, we, there was another war in 98. Yeah. So I still, I'll try to remember some of my pigeon. Do you still speak? Uh, <laughs> I can say like one, one talk, like mate or friend or something, but no, <laughs> not, not really. Yeah. Did yeah, you learn yeah. it a bit? Oh, sure. Yeah, we had cool. to learn pi English pigeon to, for our <laughs> training and stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll have to brush it off. Try and, it out. And try it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there aren't many people that know that in Australia, so you'll be fine. <laughs> Right. It's kind of like saying, like, America versus, like, the Bahamas or yeah. something. Right? Yeah. You probably just need to um, brush up on your Australian bogan language or the Australian English that we have over here. Yeah. Do you know the term bogan? Yes, I do. I was at a, I was at a party where I sold paintings uh, two weeks yeah. ago, and the, the host was from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I was asking her... What are some good Australia things? And she said, Bur Bur Borgen or Bergen? Bogan. Yeah, yeah. B O G A N. Bogan. I need to, sorry, yeah, I need to, I'll research more of that on the plane ride in about 10 hours <laughs> yeah. here and hopefully I'll have some. If yeah. you have any ideas for paintings, yeah. let us know. I have a look. Yeah, so for all of my analytical research, I've promised Matt a few tickets per day if he's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can share, yeah, I have, I have a list of uh, terms, yeah. <laughs> And um, so in Melbourne, is there, are you doing a gallery thing that like, are you, can people go to see the paintings there or you're just there to paint? Uh, if people want to get in touch and 
and see what we're doing while we're there. Um, you know, they can contact us, but we don't have any official. Yeah, the best way, like Instagram, right. mm -hmm. mine will be at CISO, Twitter's mm -hmm. at CISO, mm -hmm. Facebook is at CISO. Yeah, and all mine's at Dana Ellen. So we're very yeah. easy to follow and find. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And so what we're hoping to do while we're, well, not hoping, we'll have internet while we're there and we'll be posting daily, if not more than daily, um, and using a couple of hashtags like Made in Australia or, cool. you know, just hashtagging with our names so people can follow and see what we're creating when we're there. And if, if people are around the Gold Coast on the 15th of November, get along to um, the, what's that, exhibit, 19... Karen Gallery, which is at 19 Karen Avenue in Mermaid Beach. I'll be there on the Saturday night, the 15th, for the opening. And you can also go the night before for the live painting event with the String Quartet. Yes. And thank you both for taking the time out to have a chat with us today. I hope you learn more about the Australian animals and the Bogan people and the just Australians in general. I hope you have a good time. <laughs> Well. So you. far, so good. Yeah. We're very excited. Very excited. Thank you. We it's really a, appreciate it. It's a pretty great country. Most people are pretty lovely, so I'm sure you'll have a great time. And oh. we look forward to seeing what you create, and I'm sure maybe we could do another blog or something about that when you get home, about what you include in the exhibition made in Australia when you get home to Washington, D.C. Yes. And um, to see more information from Dana Ellen, see her website, D-A-N-A-E-L-L-Y-N.com and Matt Ciso's um, website, mattsesow.com. They're also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you very much and see vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans. Great.